Oh, yeah. It's time for everybody's favorite post-podcast show. That's right. It's Dinkin' Around with Eddie and Webby. Oh, yeah. This is oh uh, yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah, uh, man! I don't even know where to how to recover from that. Was such an amazing podcast, man! Had so much fun. Oh with the, man, with the waters, right? Oh, we had Lee and Annalie Waters. We debuted a brand new original music video from Eddie and Webby featuring Annalie Waters, Boom. and the video featured a whole bunch of amazing pro pickleball players. I still can't believe that happened. It was a dream come true to make that video. And I loved every second of it, and I thought that was a great podcast. Yeah, man, I'm I'm very grateful that we are partners in this because <laughs> you do such an awesome job with <laughs> the music, with the production, the editing, all that. Like, I just uh, it's it's pretty impressive stuff, man. Well, thank you, but I like I feel like I got to do something to make up for it because like you you do such an awesome job with this podcast and all the live streaming and commentating that we do. I don't know how to do any of that. So I got to make it up somehow, and I feel like music is how I can contribute in some way. <laughs> well, it's good. I think that's one of the reasons why Eddie and Webby work so well is we, uh, you know, we complement each other. Like, uh, you know, it's it's like it's like a marriage a little bit. It's a little bit like a marriage, <laughs> you know. I feel like it's way better than a marriage, though. So, I mean, we just we <laughs> we get along all the time, and we have. Uh, I mean, we we'll give each other constructive criticism, yeah. uh, but we accept it, and That's we right. move on, and we make adjustments, and yeah. <laughs> there we go. But you marriage is it. great. Marriage is, marriage is great too. Yes, <laughs> marriage is wonderful. If our wives are listening, we love you. We love you guys. Uh, we don't don't have to worry about my wife listening. No. <laughs> In case you are listening, if you are listening, I love you, babe. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, I, you know, usually we talk about beer, but we didn't in, in this podcast, uh, at all. Are you, are you enjoying a beverage? Uh, yeah, I was. And I've actually, I'm, I'm due to crap, crack open, crap, I was going to say crap open, but I, I'm due to crack open another one. And don't, uh, don't crap it open. <laughs> no, I will not crap it open. I will crack it open. Okay. And, uh, I'm actually, I don't know if you noticed this, but I'm using my nice new Beer City Open pint glass. Oh, you've well, got one fan- too. Fancy that. I got mine as well. And because I still haven't come down from my Beer City Open high and I don't want the uh, the memories to end, I'm actually drinking something that I had during that trip, and that is a mm. Perrin 98 Problems IPA. And this is a nice fresh one. Anybody who uh, listened to one of our recent podcasts or watched to the recent podcast, I drank a two-year-old 98 problems IPA that I found deep in the back shelf of my local liquor store. <laughs> uh, but I will be drinking a nice fresh one tonight. That's a fresh one. To- <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was pretty funny how you found that one. It was years old. Yeah. Nice. But the crazy thing is it really it really didn't taste that bad, surprisingly. Yeah. Like normally IPAs you do not want to age, but it, it was still very drinkable. Yeah, I mean it's I don't think it's gonna taste bad. I just think that it's probably not gonna taste nearly as good as it would if it was fresh, right? I mean you wanna you you want those hops to be fresh. The longer they sit, the more oxidation you get, the more they come out of solution. So, you know, it's it's good to drink it fresh, but it's not bad to sit on it. I, I actually have a uh one of the first beers I ever brewed. I don't even know how many years ago was it eight years ago, seven years ago when I got into brewing that yeah. it's an IPA and I'm excited to open it. It's, I mean, I guarantee it's not going to taste like an IPA, but it'll still be enjoyable <laughs> to be able to drink, you know? Nice. Yeah, that's good. It's good to hear. Um, so I'm, I'm still on a little bit of a, a hard sparkling water, a hard seltzer kick. Uh, I drank the crap out of parents, <laughs> hard seltzers at the beer city open uh, last show we did where I was in my studio office here, I did a little comparison between Truly and Henry's. Uh, and so far, Henry's is at the top of my list. Now, um, I, I wish I could get Perrin's sparkling or hard sparkling water, but obviously I'm down here in Florida, I can't get Perrin. So this this is at the top of my list, and I, I drank one during the podcast. But... I want to expand and and you know look at other brands. Um, I still want to try White Claw. I have had White Claw, but I didn't really like. 
I didn't I want to do a side by side. So today I picked up this brand called what is it? Bon and Vive? Bon and Bone and Vi- Bone and Vive? I don't know. Uh but this is a pear elderflower one that hmm. yeah, I don't know. Um another reason I like this, no added sugar, 90 calories, uh 4.25% alcohol. The the truly had added sugar which to me is just I don't know. It's a it's a hard seltzer. It's not supposed to be sweet. So I think I think I'm going to like this one. Nice. Um, but we'll see. Henry's is still at the top of my list, so we'll see where this one compares against my Henry's. But yeah, I, I am digging the spiked seltzer craze that's going yeah. on. And uh, a place that you and I visited last year when we were in Grand Rapids for the Beer City Open is Elk Brewing. Mm. And I follow them on Facebook, and they actually have their own seltzer now. However... At the moment, you can only get it at their brewery. They don't uh, mm. like mass distribute it, um, but I would definitely love to try that. Um, so far, I have not found... Um, I think the, the parent one, that was called Clear Coast, am I right? Mm-hmm. Is that right? Clear Coast, yeah. yeah. I haven't found that over on the east side of Michigan yet. Um, that's not to say that some places don't carry it, um, but I, I saw it all over the place in Grand Rapids, but I haven't seen it around me yet, so... Um, I definitely liked it. I drank a lot of that during the Beer City Open. Um, in fact, <laughs> kind of a funny story. Um, there was one time uh, you were doing a lot of, of live streaming and commentating with pros during the Beer City Open. And every once in a while, I would venture off with my camera to get some footage on the other side of Belknap Park of the pros playing. And every once in a while, I would find myself into the area of the <laughs> beer tent. Yeah. And uh, I kept forgetting that... Y- you could only drink the beer in a certain designated area. So there was one time where I, I bought one for myself. I drank it very quickly. And then I was like, you know what? That was very tasty. I'm going to buy another one. And I'm going to buy one for Eddie, too. And uh, I was I, I bought them. I was carrying the That was two nice of you, by the way, to buy seltzers. one for me. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but I was carrying the two seltzers, and I was walking back over to where you were. And then I got stopped because I forgot that I couldn't take it out of the designated drinking area. So I needed to uh, pound those two uh, pretty quick <laughs> so I could get back to where you were. And I think you noticed that I was uh, I was feeling it pretty good after that, too. <laughs> I did notice that. Yeah. You came back, uh, and you were feeling no pain at that point. But that was pretty no, cool. No pain. No I, pain. I, I got to tell you, man, every pickleball tournament should have a beer tent with good beer, by the way, because Perrin, not yes. only not only was I happy that there was beer there, but Perrin is, it's got to be top of my list of, of breweries out there. I mean, they're great. So to have good beer and pickleball on a hot summer day, can't beat it. Hell yeah. I love it. And uh, two weeks after the Beer City Open, I was back on that side of the state for the Canadian Lakes Pickleball Tournament. Uh-huh. And uh, and my wife, we did a lot of fun activities and went all around Grand- the Grand Rapids area before the tournament. And uh, we visited Perrin while we were there and uh, had a, a great evening there, as always. Nice. And uh, did yeah, you eat there? Was, uh, um, did not. No, we had already no. eaten, so we just went there strictly to have some beverages. And Would, I got a flight, and yeah. as always, the everything I had in the flight was tasty. The the and, night uh, we live streamed from there, uh, I made the mistake of not <laughs> not eating anything <laughs> at all. Yeah, and it was like eleven o'clock. We're wrapping up, and uh, I just remember you had uh, like a chicken finger basket that had been sitting out for an hour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it was the greatest. Yeah. The greatest chicken finger I've ever had in my entire life was that oh my God. stale, hour-and-a-half-old <laughs> chicken finger from Perrin. Oh, yeah. I remember uh, Zane Affleck had joined our group because we, uh, we had Rob Cassidy. We had our buddy Gizmo. We had mm-hmm. Michelle Esquivel. And then uh, Zane Affleck joined us. And then you had left for a little bit. And then they we wanted to go over the footage of Zane doing a nasty Nelson to the Puppet Master and uh, I didn't know how to do that. So I got up, you joined, you took my spot and I left for a good 45 minutes. And during that time, I, I went and got food. And yeah, that was the best tasting food of my life because I was starving to death. Um, and then I tried to slide you the uh, extra chicken basket, chicken fingers basket. But I know yeah. it's kind of hard to eat it while you're on the air. So yeah, I didn't want grease oh. all over the 
you know, all with the buttons and everything. So right. I, I should show you guys sometime out there, like all the controls that I have in front of me. Dominic Catalano, when we were, you know, live streaming at Beer City Open, said that it looked like I was flying an airplane over there. But yeah. there is a lot. There's it's it's. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of different buttons and switches and different little gadgets, but it's fun. I love it. Yeah, I think you need to take video or at least a picture and have it on file, have it handy. So that way, like every time you screw up the scoreboard, you can say like, <laughs> look at what I've got to deal with, people. Right. Come on. <laughs> Cut me some slack Cause here. I, yeah, because well, I feel like nobody can truly understand until they see yeah. what it is that you have to take control of to run the podcast and keep track of the scoreboard. <laughs> well, you know, going forward, I think I think I've realized that that's not it's not setting me up for success. I either can do one or the other. And since I only know my system, it makes sense for me to get somebody else to run the scoreboard. So like when we're doing the Johnny Pickleball show next Friday night, um, they have a couple um, juniors that help warm up the pros before and they're going to help. They're going to help me with the scoreboard part. But, but I mean, you did, you, well, what was your experience? Because I had to leave a couple of times to go use the bathroom or hit the parent tent and you kind of took over. Like, what, what did you think of it? Well, I, I immediately, um, earned like a lot more respect for you <laughs> when you left right. because, yeah, it was very hard to keep track of the scoreboard while trying to talk to people. Like, if I ignored the people that were doing commentary with us and like, yeah, took like moved my headphone to the side so I could hear the what the referee was saying and just focused on the scoreboard, I was okay. But then I had no idea what the people around me were saying. So it's like yeah. you had to, had to find a good balance. Like, do I, do I listen to what they're saying or do I listen to the score? Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's tough. Well, well some of the refs, are, yeah, some of the refs were super loud and that was easy because you could be in conversation. You could hear seven, four, two and you're like, oh, OK. And you could check the scoreboard real quick. That was easy. It was the times where yeah. some of the refs were a little bit quieter or where their back was to us. Right. Because where our where yeah. our tent was, was kind of like in the corner back of the court. And, you know, it was a little bit breezy at times. And that was a little bit challenging, too. But, man, we definitely learned a lot. That's for sure. Oh, definitely. And <laughs> What an experience. Like, that was, uh, man, definitely, I've said it before, one of the best pickleball experiences of my life. Or I would say it, absolutely the best pickleball experience of my life, the, the Beer City Open from this year. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. And what's so cool now is that, so um, Webby's gone back and he's he's edited uh, two of, I don't know, like a six-part series probably of our experience at the Beer yeah. City Open. Uh, and, and it's been so cool for me to be able to kind of go and, and relive all of the amazing things that happened. Cause it was like, it was like four or five days straight of just amazing stuff that my brain kind of like mushed it all together into one yeah. big, amazing experience. And so, uh, it, you know, it was just cool to start going back and relive all of the little isolated things that we got to be a part of. Yeah, and I kind of like that I like I went a few weeks. Normally, I'll do a tournament and I'll edit the video and have it done within like the next few days, just because I'm so excited to go over it. Um, but I kind of like the fact that I had a lot going on. I had some vacation time with the family, so I liked that I had a few weeks to not look at it. And now that I'm going through it again, because a few weeks has passed, like I'm just appreciating every bit of it so much more. And it's just I love watching all the footage that we recorded. And it's, it's been tough to, to like cut it down to like 10 minute segments. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm trying to like make, make it like the, make it entertaining, make it nice and short and sweet, but show um, like all, like the full experience that we had. And it's just it, by far the most fun video editing I've done so far. And uh, <laughs> so I've done, we, we did uh, part one and part two. Part one was day one. Part two was day two. Mm. However, part three <laughs> I really, I really think day three is going to be three parts just by itself because we had uh, when Eddie and Webby teamed up to uh, do our the tournament, the yep. three point five division tournament. I feel like that's going to be a segment by itself, and then we had uh, th that day men's doubles highlights of men's doubles and women's singles. That was awesome, mm -hmm. and then uh, later that night, a lot of people might not even know this, we did. Eddie versus Webby four that night for the Kyle Yates autographed paddle. Mm -hmm. That's, that's right. all coming out. That's all just on day three. That's right. And there yep. were four, there were four days of action. So yeah. man, this is I I love every second of it. I mean, it's it's so great to relive all that stuff. I agree. 
I, I got to tell you one cool thing too that, uh, and I know we're spending a lot of time at Beer City Open, but it was such an amazing event. I think it's important. So for those of you guys that don't know, I got there, I flew in a day before Webby got there. So I got there the Wednesday before and I went up to Belknap Park and Matt Loria showed up with all the pear and beer that they were going to be serving at the beer tent. And basically it was like, um, him and, and Andrea Cooper running around and they were basically asking a bunch of people to go and help unload beer. And all of the top pros that were there at that time getting practice in before the tournament helped unload the beer from his car to be able to bring inside. Now, nice. I, I, I want to say that again. The top pros in pickleball stopped what they were doing to help unload beer that was going to be sold at that tournament. If you can name any other sport out there where that would happen, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you this Eddie and Webby paddle. If you can prove it, because I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. There's no, no way that that would happen. And everybody was having a good time and we were just unloading beer and you know, just, it was, it was so cool. So much fun. Yeah, it, it, it's not going to happen in any other sport. Mm -hmm. in, like, I love the fact, like, we've talked about how we hate the fact that we didn't get into pickleball earlier in life. We didn't yeah. know about it earlier in life. But at the same time, I love the fact that we're so involved in it at this point in time because it's like it's really taking off, but it hasn't taken off as much as it will, Yep. if that makes sense. Yeah, we're kind of getting in still at the... As it's as the roller coaster is creeping up that hill, right? Because yes, it's not even near where it's going to get. I mean, especially with you know it just being on the Today Show. Uh, Barrett Kinchelow oh, yeah. was just talking about in his most recent podcast that he um, he saw a huge spike in Google searches leading to his videos about what is pickleball. Huge spike in that right after the Today Show segment aired. Nice. So I think Let's, we're going to see actually. Let's talk about that a little bit. What yeah. what are your thoughts? There was a lot of uh, heated discussions about how that Today Show segment went, and I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on it, if you don't mind me asking. No, I don't mind at all, because I do have opinions. Uh, I think that Tyson and Lucy did an amazing job. Uh, I think that they they did great. They represented the sport well. They demonstrated the athleticism that's, that's required in it. Um, obviously, they're, they're both, you know, great players, very good looking people. So to, to have, you know, a couple people represent the sport, you know, they were one of uh, or two of 20 that I think would do a great job. But I think they did absolutely incredible. Uh, personally, for me, what I think would have been better, and this is more on NBC in the Today Show, not on Tyson and Lucy, I would have rather seen four people out there showing what a real doubles match looks like before they brought on uh, Lester and, and I can't remember her name off the top of my head. I think that if they would have done that, it would have, it would have shown how the pro players actually play. And instead... They showed them, they showed, you know, Tyson and Lucy warming up and they showed how there's definitely some athleticism there, but I still don't think it represented the sport properly. And then when they brought Lester and, and uh, whatever her name is up there to play, you know, obviously they were, they were beginners. They, you know, I, I don't, I don't know that they've ever even swung a pickleball pal before. And I just don't think that that properly represented what the sport could be at the end of the day, though, any media is good media in my opinion. And I do think it would help grow the sport. Do I think it could have been better? Absolutely. But do I think that that's more on NBC and the Today Show than on Tyson and Lucy? Absolutely, 100%. What do you think? Yeah, and I, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And uh, so to break it down, they started off with a, a very nice pre-edited segment mm -hmm. about the history of pickleball, the rules of pickleball. That I thought was absolutely perfect. That was a, It was a great edited segment that they played beforehand. And because of that, I feel like the rest of it was totally fine the way that it was. Like you said, could it have been better? Absolutely. It could have been way better than it was. But I also agree that, uh, that Tyson and Lucy did an amazing job with, with the, uh, the time that they were given 
and the fact that they were doing they were trying to show it to absolute beginners it was obvious yeah. that the people from the today show did zero research whatsoever uh before that segment and i think that would have been helpful i mean uh just doing this podcast you and i do crazy amounts of research before we have yep. a guest on we want to at least know somewhat what we're going to be discussing and uh unfortunately the the news anchors you could it was obvious that they didn't do any research whatsoever and then uh al roker <laughs> trying to act like he knew the rules of the sport like yeah. after one of the serves he was like okay you guys lose your serve uh <laughs> no al it now goes to the second server don't yeah, act al. like you know what you're talking about al jeez al roker you're talking about al roker you blew it you blew it al roker <laughs> Yeah, I, I I have nothing negative to say about how uh, Tyson and Lucy did. I thought they did awesome. Um, I, like people on the pickleball forum were were bitching about the fact that they weren't playing by the official rules. Yeah. and it's like, come on, man, they're playing with people that ha- have never played before. They have what, like one, maybe two minutes to work with. You're not going to be able to go through all the rules and tell them all the details. Like you said, I think it would have been awesome to have four professionals show mm-hmm. what pickleball is really all about. Um, but they they still made it fun. It was a fun segment. I think that's what the Today Show was going for. They wanted to show beginners playing the game and stuff like that. So I, I think it was awesome. I definitely think it was a, uh, a win for the sport of pickleball. Absolutely brought attention to people that have never heard of it before. And so it, it served its purpose. Was it perfect? Absolutely not. Um, but I think it was awesome, and I thought Tyson and Lucy did an awesome job. Uh, another thing that people were saying on the pickleball forum was, uh, "Oh man, this was this was so horrible." It's uh, at least now I'm not going to have a problem finding <laughs> places to play right. because people are because of right. the decrease in people wanting to play right. pickleball because right. of the segment. <laughs> shut up! Just shut up! You shut are your damn idiot. mouth! You need to shut up right now! Shut up! <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. They were like, this is going to cause people to not want to play pickleball anymore. <laughs> and anybody that doesn't know what pickleball is, they're absolutely not going to show any interest whatsoever. You are an idiot if you thought that. <laughs> yeah, I, so I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, first of all, even if you're thinking that, I, I still don't understand why people think it's such a good idea to be able to throw it out there on Facebook, right? Like, oh, yeah. I'm going to go to the pickleball forum and I'm basically just going to crap all over uh, something that has get, you know, given way more visibility to the sport than, you know, a lot of other things that are going on right now. And it didn't, it didn't go as well as it could have. We, we all can agree there, but to think that nobody's going to show up to pickleball Thursday night, (laughs) come on, you know what? You don't show up to pickleball Thursday night. We don't, we don't need you. You can go on (laughs) and troll, uh, you know, badminton. Why don't you go play badminton and and troll them in the badminton forum, you jackass. (laughs) <laughs> right. Yeah. Seriously, though, think about it. Like, did did people really think that <laughs> right. people that love pickleball, they were like, yeah. oh, I love pickleball. Oh, cool. It's on the Today Show. Oh, man, this segment sucked. I'm never playing pickleball again. Screw right. this sport. Forget about this. <laughs> I'm I'm never even touching a pickleball paddle. All those up there. Right. I'm throwing them out. I don't even want to sell them. I'm going to throw them out because nobody's going to want to buy them. Who's going to want to buy them now that it was on the Today Show and it didn't go as planned? Nobody's right. going to play. This is it's a it's a <laughs> stupid sport now. And they blew it. Yeah. Right. Yesterday, I thought this was the most fun sport <laughs> ever. I couldn't get enough. But now, because of this Today Show segment, I'm never playing again. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. Yeah. Shut your damn mouth, you loser. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, man. Uh, that, but, I mean, we we see trolling all the time on the Pickleball yeah. Forum. It is it is kind of comical at times what people yeah. think. Yeah, I do find it post. funny. But, there, man, there are some days where like I have to prevent myself from <laughs> responding to the trolls because there are some days where like from most days the trolls don't bother me they make me laugh but there are some days where uh, they just like make my blood boil yeah and uh and i just want to put people in their place but at the end of the day like they're they're doing it for attention they're attention whores that's all there is to it that's right i agree if anybody out there listening still has an opinion please let us know we actually have an opinion from Tom Miller. He said, "Don't Willie, don't don't Willie, <laughs> don't, don't worry. Our courts were full tonight. Uh, that's good, Tom. I'm glad that I'm, I'm assuming you were playing at Belknap Park. And thir- actually, Thursday night isn't that uh, isn't that like four zero and above night where you gotta like 
you got to be a good, you got to be like a really good solid player to, to play at Belknap on Thursday nights. So that's good. I'm glad they were still full despite the horrible today show, the, that horrible <laughs> today show segment. God. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. The, the internet trolls strike again. That's right. Never, never fails. Uh, and <laughs> that's yes. what I say to all the internet trolls. That's what, that's what I think about you all. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, what, uh, what, what's going to pick up? So you, you had kind of a weird experience lately that you've been wanting to tell me, but thought it was better <laughs> to tell me in front of the world, right? Cause we have thousands of people, yes. millions of people out there listening right now. What, yes. <laughs> what is yes, the story I refused, that I want to hear about? I refused to tell Eddie about this <laughs> until we were in front of our thousands of viewers and really? listeners on the, uh, the podcast here. So, um, some brand new pickleball courts just got uh, open, just got uh, put in place, and are open to the public in the city of Dearborn, Michigan, at uh, the uh, Performing Arts and Community Center, the Ford Performing Arts and Community Center in Dearborn, oh, Michigan. I know where that is. Isn't that off um, Michigan Ave there? Yes. Yep, yeah. It's very close to Ford's Garage. Yeah. Yeah. Dearborn. We've been there. We've been there a couple yeah. times. Yep. Yeah. I love the city of Dearborn. Downtown yeah. Dearborn is beautiful. Lots of great places to go. And uh, about, I'd say about four weeks ago, they uh, had the the uh, opening of their public pickleball courts. And so one day after work, I was like, you know what? I'm going to drive by because I work in downtown Detroit and uh, Dearborn is uh, on my way home. So I was like, I'm going to stop at the new Dearborn courts and play with uh, whoever is there. I'm sure it's going to be an awesome time. There will be tons of people there. So... I go there, I park, and the uh, the whole entire pickleball court is jam-packed with people. So I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. I've never seen pickleball courts so full. So I walk up there, and then I, I start to realize there's like there's way more people on these courts than there should be <laughs> for playing pickleball. Um, so I get there, and there, there's four courts. So if you do the math, four times four, what is that, 16? Mm-hmm. Something like that? Yep. So there shouldn't be any more than 16 people on the courts. Um, I kid you not, there's probably 40 or 50 people on the courts. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> and, uh, and none of them had pickleball paddles, um, but they were all running around like crazy, like mad people. And um, when I got real close, I saw that they were throwing a like big giant toy frog. <laughs> so they were what? all just running what? around and uh, Did- like... There was one one big giant toy frog. It was like I think it was rubber, and uh, and they were chucking it. Somebody would catch it. They'd run around trying to dodge people. They'd throw it to somebody else, and they'd catch it. And they were doing this all over the pickleball courts. There was not one person playing pickleball in the courts, and I just I I just couldn't help but stare and watch because I had no idea what the hell was going on. And this was during what was considered to be open pickleball time. They're they're no, like there's no- they're public pickleball courts, so like that's it's always open pickleball time. So <laughs> I, I go there, like I, I walk up to the fence, and then like this one lady walks out, and uh, <laughs> I have my pickleball gear, and I'm like, uh, so is is anybody in there playing pickleball? And then uh, she was like, oh no, we're doing uh, we're doing boot camp training. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, okay, that's that's pretty cool. And then like they they all finish playing keep away with the frog or whatever the hell it was they were doing, <laughs> and they all start coming out. And then this one woman, uh, she confronts me, and she was like, "Wait a second, don't don't tell me you're actually here to play pickleball." And I'm like, uh, "Yeah, the, these are pickleball courts, aren't aren't they? Like, aren't these pickleball courts? Like, that's that, right. that's exactly what I came here for." And she was like, "But." But that's only for old people. You don't look you don't look old enough to be playing pickleball. Oh my god. And I wow. was like, "Are you serious?" I'm like, uh, th- "It's it's a great sport." And I was like, "I've got extra paddles. I can like you you and some others can play with me if you want." And she was like, "You've got to be kidding me, dude. You 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 really are here for pickleball? That's crazy." And the funny thing is like she was I would say she was at least 10 or 15 years older than me so like I wanted to like make fun of her age and be like <laughs> you you're, old. Like you're the you're the yeah. you're the perfect age for pickleball but right. no I, I but it just I I it blew my mind like I couldn't believe it was actually happening like I wish I wish I was recording at the time 
uh, getting some video because they just I couldn't believe what was happening. And then, and then for this lady to bash me right. for wanting to play pickleball because I'm too young for it and stuff like that. That just it just shows me that uh, we've got a long way to go to get where we should be in the world of pickleball. Yep. More more segments on today show. Yeah. Uh, maybe on this was. To be honest, this was this. To be fair, this was pre Today ah, Show, so I feel okay. like I feel like this was if this was post Today Show, it might have had a different outcome. Who knows? Gotcha. Well, then we'll uh, maybe we'll have to do it on Good Morning America. You never know. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, once it's on Good Morning America, then just forget about it. Forget about it. Well, that's a that's a good pickleball story. I don't have anything nearly as exciting as that going on. <laughs> That's funny. So I, I still like, so you said they were in a boot camp. They were in a boot camp, and part of that meant throwing a frog around. That's what I'm still not understanding. Yeah, I, I still have no idea. I wish, like I was, I think I was just too much in shock of what I was <laughs> witnessing yeah. to ask questions. Like I wish I would have thought to ask questions of like, like what, what, uh, what part of boot camp training requires throwing a big giant <laughs> toy frog around right. inside of pickleball courts. I mean, there was like a, a big open field near where they were. Like, yeah. like, why did they like? Why did they have to do it within the confines of a pickleball court? I I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know what's going on with that. Interesting. Ah, uh, well, I'm going to be traveling up to the D for work um, in a few weeks. Anything new going on when it comes to pickleball in Detroit? Uh, actually, it's funny that you ask because there's actually two big events coming up in the next two weeks. In fact, uh, in two days, this coming Saturday, Palmer Park in Detroit, it's uh, there's a, a big tennis facility there, and they recently did some major renovations, and they added pickleball lines to a few of their courts, so they have some dedicated pickleball courts there. And I am going to try going there with my family on Saturday for the ribbon cutting. And uh, there might be a video coming out about Ooh. that if you uh, stay tuned. You never know. Where Where's there, Palmer Park again? I, I know I've been there before, but... Uh, I forget, to be honest. I have to Google. I will have to can, Google map can you it. <laughs> point here? Is that... Um, it's like like in this region or okay. somewhere. Yep. Yeah. That's so if you ever ask anybody <laughs> from Michigan where something is, this is what they... This is what they yeah, use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably like around around this this region, this area, right there. Yeah, <laughs> good. Well, I, I'm I'm hoping. So when I travel up to Detroit for work, I always want to continue playing pickleball. You know, keep my exercise going because typically I eat and drink like I shouldn't, and so I want to be able to get get some exercise in. Uh, and Webby and I usually find a place to be able to go. But if there's places that are downtown, that would you know certainly make things easier because i stay down yeah, for when sure I go there so it'd be nice it'd be nicer to do that and another thing that's happening two weeks from now um so this coming saturday is the big palmer park ribbon cutting um a week after that closer to downtown detroit uh in fact it is considered part of downtown detroit cadillac square is having a three-hour block of time where it is free pickleball for anybody that shows up and uh, we are, uh, I'm hoping to get a big group there because I think this is like a, a trial run for them um, to see like, is there a demand for pickleball in downtown Detroit? So anybody watching or listening, if you are near Detroit, you need to go. It is, let me make sure I get the date correct here because I don't want to give people the incorrect information. Um, it is Saturday, August 17th. And uh, shoot, I don't have the time in front of me. I'll find that before the end of the episode. But I want to say it's from 12 to 3. But I need to confirm that before I say that for sure. But anyway, three hours of free pickleball for anybody that shows up. Uh, it's encouraged to bring your own paddle, but they will have paddles for people that don't have them. And I'm thinking if there is a huge turnout, then that will show them that they need to get pickleball in downtown Detroit. So please, anybody listening that is close to Detroit on August 17th, look up the uh, the pickleball event that's going on in downtown Detroit at Cadillac Square and show up and show your support and show that Detroit needs pickleball. Do it. Do it. Do it. 
Yes. That'll be good, man. I would love it. How cool would that be when I go, you know, up to Detroit for work to just be able to walk out the building that I'm in and there's pickleball right there. Cause Cadillac square, that's, that's right by campus marshes there, right? That's a little section where they have like basketball and stuff set up. Um, I, or is that someplace different? It's uh, I think Cadillac square is a little bit closer to like Comerica park area. It's like oh. between campus marshes and in Comerica park, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Hmm. Well, maybe you I need think. to get maybe, maybe 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 you need to know maybe you need to know that huh maybe you should look that yeah, up. maybe I should have done some research but I mean yeah. this is dinking around we this is yeah. unplanned I didn't know we were going to talk about this <laughs> yeah that's right well cool well that'll be fun I'm excited to uh, to be able to play when I go up there don't worry guys Webby and I will play we'll probably do Eddie versus Webby when I'm up there again in a few weeks. Um, nice. Just, and from here on out, we are going to be playing for not only the Eddie versus Webby championship belt, but also that belt, that that belt right, right there. there. Yeah. Yep. It will soon be probably like right around this area of the okay. background of my podcast location. Um, but it won't, it'll be for the Eddie versus Webby belt and the autographed Kyle Yates limited edition pickleball paddle. That's right. Oh, which, yeah. Which we still haven't told who won Eddie versus Webby for for that paddle, have we? Oh, that's right. No, we don't. We don't know. Ooh. We don't know. And we both we both decided not to uh, put it in view <laughs> <laughs> until <laughs> we did. until uh, until until we <laughs> debut the video. <laughs> we certainly did, didn't we? Yep. Um, this is like a was it WrestleMania six when you had Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior. And they battled each other in the main event, and the winner got the heavyweight belt and the intercontinental championship belt. Right? That is correct. I have that because WrestleMania Five was Macho Man versus Hulk Hogan. WrestleMania, yeah, it was WrestleMania Six from Toronto, wasn't it? The what's that? The Sky Dome. What's that? What's that big place in Toronto? The big dome there. I think Sky Dome. Sky Dome sounds right. Um, so I have the details for anybody that wanted the details for the Cadillac Square thing. It is from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday, August 17th. And Eddie was correct. Cadillac Square is real close to Campus Marshes Park. Um, it's the area that has food trucks regularly. Mm -hmm. um, and it is where sometimes they have basketball courts. And uh, the funny thing is that's I pitched that idea to people... Um, that have control over that area of downtown Detroit. I the, I was not I didn't know that this was happening until just a couple of days ago. Somebody I work with actually told me about it. So I'd like to think that I played a part in this happening, but I don't know for sure if my suggestions played a role or not. But either way, I love the fact that it's happening. Well, either way, Cheryl Hall Wyatt says, "Great job." Oh, nice. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, Webby, I, uh, you, you know what my normal bedtime is, right? Yes, it was probably like, what, two hours ago? <laughs> Only an hour ago. I live in Naples. It's 930. <laughs> it's a mandatory bedtime. Um, I'm not saying we're done just yet, but I did want to play a quick video. Uh, so this is a video from our buddy Peter Colvin. Uh, Peter had played... A different version of this for me when I was back in Grand Rapids um, a couple months ago where we filmed the Steve Peranto podcast and I played in, oh God, what tournament was that? I, these tournaments are all starting to mix together. Oh, the State Games of Michigan tournament, which was supposed to be up in that park, which we ended up playing at Grand Rapids Rack and Fitness again. Uh, but anyway, while I was up there, Peter Colvin played a different version of this video for me, but then he decided to change it up a little bit uh, and sent it over. And why don't I just go ahead and play it? What do you think? Do it. Let's All do right. it. Let's do it. Here we go. I've got a poster of Tyson McGuffin hanging on my wall. I have autographed pictures of Kyle Yates lining my hall. 
Dave Weinbach is with me on my Facebook page. I'm on Pickleball Forum almost every day. And I play Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday too. I'm so addicted to pickle. I said, doctor, doctor, what can I do? He looked at me and said, can you play Wednesday at 2? I have dreams of the U.S. Open and winning the gold. But in reality, I'm probably too fat and too old. But I will give it the old college try. But if it's 95 degrees, I might die. And then they'll shuffle me off to that dink fest in the sky. Oh, I'm so addicted to pickle. I said, doctor, doctor, what can it be? He looked at me and said, want to play a tournament with me? I'm sneaking out of work a little earlier every day. I'm willing to take that risk even though it's affecting my pay. If there's a 12-step program, I'll complete every one. But I'm not giving up pickle cause it's too damn fun. It's my drug of choice. It makes me feel young. I love pickle. Oh, I'm so addicted to pickle. I said, doctor, doctor, what can I do? He looked at me and said, I'm addicted to Oh, I'm so addicted to pickle. I said, Lord, what can I do? And I heard a voice that said, I'm addicted to Another nice. great, yeah, another great song. Uh, you know, Peter's a cool guy. Got to hang out with him a little bit at that um, for the couple weeks that I was up there in Grand Rapids. Nice guy. Obviously a great, talented songwriter, musician, um, all around good guy. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I love that song. I, I saw it when it was, uh, I think he posted it on the Pickleball Forum not too long ago, and uh, I thought that was a, a great song. And uh, nicely done. Yeah. We appreciate that, Peter. Thank you for sending that over to us. Um, go check it out. Peter Colvin is his name. And, man, I love the fact that there's so many great, musically talented people in the pickleball world that, you know, want to keep creating these videos. Just like the one we debuted tonight, right? Oh, hey. yeah, that's right. Pickleball for life. That's right. That's right. And, yeah. uh... As soon as we sign off the air on this show, that, that video will be going live yes. for the world to see on the YouTubes.com. That's <laughs> Y-O-U-T-U-B-E-S.com. Yeah. And, the, I uh, thought it was www.theyoutubes.com. Oh, yes. Not? Yeah. yeah. You cannot, yeah. Do, do not forget the word the. It's www.theyoutubes.com, yeah. and you'll, you'll be able to find it. Yeah. <laughs> Search for the Eddie and the Webby, and we're good. Yes, um, but yeah, I, I thought uh, I was I was very happy with how it turned out, especially with the uh, the Anna Lee Waters part, and then all the different pros that contributed to the video. Um, man, super super fun to work on that one. Yeah, no, that was really cool. Obviously, you did an incredible job. Not surprised. You always do, uh, but I think the the pro cameos definitely added to it and it looked like you got pretty much everybody that's been on our podcast to to play a role in it right yeah a, a almost good amount of them there, there were a couple that weren't but like most of um the pros that we have had on the past year uh yeah. were in it and i love that fact um even a couple people that weren't at the beer city open like steve peranto and scott golden neither of them were at the beer city open but they were nice enough to send me some video clips to include in the video. Um, and I love the fact that they were part of it because um, they both have had a huge impact on the Eddie and Webby podcast. So cannot thank them enough for contributing. And uh, yeah, just super fun. Great time. Uh, a very fun time working on that project. Yes. 
The world needs to see it, and I'm excited. I think that I think that video is gonna do really well. Are we gonna be able to download that in the future from like iTunes or some other places? I do believe we will. It just has to uh, go through the approval process by the powers that be that control what gets accepted for um, the uh, the music streaming sites. But if pickleball anthem got accepted, I don't see any reason why pickleball for life wouldn't get accepted. That's right. Well, I'm really excited about that. You know what else I'm excited excited about is next Friday. That is going to be August the 16th. We are going to be live streaming from the Johnny Pickleball Show. Now, we were supposed to be live streaming from there last Friday. And right now, the Florida weather is really weird. Usually you get, usually, well, it, it always rains every day, right? This time of year, it usually rains every day. But usually it comes in, it's like an hour in the afternoon, anywhere from like two to four, and then it's done. Then you're over with. That's why the Johnny Pickleball show starts at 4.30. The rain's usually out of there by then. You're good to go. But last week, the weather was nasty. It was weird. So we had to cancel. But a week from tomorrow, that would be August 16th, we're going to be going live from the... Johnny Pickleball Show, which is live at East Naples Community Park, home of the U.S. Open, right underneath the tent. We're going to be doing a podcast with Johnny to dig a little bit deeper into him, his story. He's got a great story to tell. Uh, And then we're going to be live streaming some matches. If you guys don't know what the Johnny Pickleball Show is, he has some of the top talent in Southwest Florida come out and play. There's usually six of them. They rotate in and out. The people that are going to be sitting out are going to be doing some guest commentary, which will be fun. So we'll get, you know, even more Southwest Florida pickleball players to commentate, show the world their talents. And uh, I'm excited, man. It's going to be a fun time. Nice. Yeah, sounds awesome. Can't wait for that to happen. Yes. A lot of other big things coming up. We might even uh, we might even have an international guest sometime in the next few weeks as well. Ooh. What? Yeah. Right? Can you believe that? I can't believe it, and uh, that sounds too good to be true. Well, we'll see. We'll see, guys. <laughs> There's another one of those things that I hate when people do it, but <laughs> we're doing it again. Yep. Uh, yep, got to. You just got to. Uh, one thing I got to mention right now, uh, Lauren McLaughlin just uh, gave us a message. Shout out to the two greatest podcasters to ever grace pickleball with their talents. Oh, come on now, Lauren. That's way too kind of you to say something like that. Yeah. And, well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to, that's very nice of you, Lauren, but I'm super excited to be able to see what your first podcast podcast ended up with tonight. The, uh, you know, the, I don't know. I mean, Lauren, Lauren has like one of those personalities that, uh, is just, I don't even know how to describe it. Like it draws you in. It's very comforting and she makes you feel really comfortable, but she's got like a little bit of sarcasm too. And it's really <laughs> funny. So I'm excited to check out the first episode of the No Smoke Pickleball Show, which debuted tonight. That's right. And uh, Lauren is another person I had the pleasure of meeting for the first time at the Beer City Open. So that was awesome. Um, got to do some commentary with her for some live matches. And uh, actually, in the uh, in part two of the Beer City Open video mm-hmm. that we just released, um, there's a little uh, segment that has that features Lauren uh, some behind the scenes action of Lauren doing some live streaming. So I'm glad I was able to capture that and include it in the video. Did you see her, um, her Facebook, the live with Lauren profile pic? What it, what it, it's actually her sitting between me and Dave Weinbach when she was doing the commentary. So that was pretty cool. I did. I love it. Great yes. picture. Uh, but I'm super excited to be able to see that. And guys, we promise you in the future, we're going to do our best to not have a live broadcast the same night as the no smoke pickleball show this one just unfortunately with scheduling things it just kind of happened that way but we're going to do our best in the future to not do that because honestly we'd we'd rather we just rather not i I don't think it's it's setting it's not setting us up for success so we're going to be definitely trying to do a better job with coordinating that we we ran into that with steve peranto too it's like (laughs) right you know thursday nights worked for us thursday nights is the only night that worked for him so Sometimes it happens, but we're going to do what we can to make sure that you guys can be engaged in both the That's No right. Smoke Pickleball show and the Eddie and Webby show as well. That is correct. But yeah, if you if you tuned into our show tonight live, 
make sure you check out the No Smoke the No Smoke Pickleball Show. I know I will be as soon as we go off the air, and uh, it's just it's it's awesome, and uh, it sounds like it's going to be a very fun show, and uh, and we hope you think that our show is fun, and we just there's there's room for lots more fun pickleball shows. Just keep them coming, everybody. That's right. More and more amazing content out there. Well, Webby, as I mentioned, I live in Naples. There's a mandatory 930 curfew, which <laughs> if I get caught right now, if any, if there's any Collier County uh, police officers out there that see that I'm live streaming, they're going to knock on my door and be like, you're up too late, youngie, young, youngster, get to bed. That's what's going to happen. You're, you're under arrest, <laughs> Sonny. <laughs> That's right. Way past my 9.30 uh, bedtime. But uh, anyway, great night tonight. What did you think of tonight? Oh, man, I thought it was awesome. Uh, it's uh, It was our first time back to our roots, back yeah. uh, doing our show from uh, our home locations in a very long time. Um, it felt weird at first, but after a while, I felt right at home again. And I thought it was an awesome night. I mean, having the waters on, I've been wanting to talk to them for a long time. That was very cool. And uh, like we said before, we debuted our brand new song and music video for Pickleball for Life. Uh, yeah, it was a great one and another one that will go down in history as a very memorable episode. That's right. Well, this has been your favorite post-podcast podcast, Dinking Around with Eddie and Webby. And we appreciate it. And on that note, I'm Eddie. And until next time, this is Webby, not Eddie, signing off. See ya.